Hi everybody, it's Thursday night at Now You're Cooking, which means it's demo night. As you can see, I have a very special guest star. This is my friend and neighbor, Meg Barker, and she is the proprietress and lead tour guide of Embark Main Tours, which you talk about the history of Bath. Yes, yes, we primarily do walking tours of Bath's downtown. We're also adding a tour of the historic homes in the historic district neighborhood Sweet. of Bath soon. Yes. Nice. Which, yeah. Of which we both own houses yes, in that's the neighborhood. Right. So here's our houses. No, we'll be, we'll be we'll covering the shipbuilders and ship captains houses. Yes. Um, <laughs> so tonight we're making lobster thermidor and we thought it'd be a great idea since lobster is such a many kind of thing to have Meg here and talk a little bit about the history. So while I'm cooking, we're going to have some conversation and hopefully you'll find it interesting. Um, and you can sign up for tours on your website. Yes, EmbarkMainTours.com. But do okay. it after the demo. But hey. we'll do that after the demo. <laughs> so Lobster Thermidor, we are working with a recipe that comes from Heather's great-grandmother, Nana Martha. Um, if you have heart disease, step <laughs> away from Facebook right now. Just go have a salad or something. <laughs> there are two sticks of butter in this pan there's another three ounces of butter here we've got ritz crackers we're going to be using half and half which i forgot to get out of the fridge but i will get that um so it's and you can use heavy cream if this isn't enough fat for you use heavy cream so the first thing i'm going to do is tell you what lobster thermidor is T uh, traditionally um they would pick the lobster meat out and then put it back into the lobster shell to serve and we're not going to do that tonight because it's messy and we don't feel like doing it so we're going to use a casserole dish but i just wanted to show you how to cut a lobster in half neatly so we've taken off the um, claws and you also want to take off the legs and then you want a nice heavy duty chef's knife um, and it's really great because the lobster is just divided right in half between the legs here. So you just want to stick the knife in and it looks pretty brutal. And this is a soft shell, so it might not be really smooth. And then you just cut straight down. Nice job, Louisa. Thank you very much. <laughs> I used to work in restaurants, have to do this a lot. Um, People at home are not nervous at all. <laughs> no. Um, and this is kind of icky looking, so don't look too closely because um, the tamale did not cook thoroughly. But the lobster meat is fine, so just stay away from that part. We're just going to take the um, tail out. We did a quick video earlier, um, which we'll post at some point, about how to pick lobster meat out of a lobster. Um, so we'll be posting that soon. And if you're desperate for it, let us know. And again, I'm going to say probably use a hard shell lobster in the future because this is kind of making a mess. You do want to make sure you take the brain out of the head. That is not edible. Um, and if this looked really good, then we would have... I like to start my demos out with mistakes <laughs> and bad things happening. <laughs> so this would be a lobster shell and you would fill that with lobster meat, but we're not going to do that. Thank goodness. And I don't need this anymore. Well, I think that's great. I think people, uh, that will probably be one of your most widely viewed videos is how to pick a lobster meat. I think so too yeah. i hope so yeah sorry everybody i'm coming back I we found promise. people want to come to maine for lobster but they might just stick to lobster rolls if right. they knew how to do it exactly and would... that's i mean the lobster meat that you get in your lobster roll comes from a lobster like you just saw um so i'm going to get the sauce started so this is a white sauce we've made this before for mac and cheese way back last year sometime um and while i'm getting this started if you just follow the recipe it's super easy we're going to um, we have our butter melted. I'm going to add the onion in there and that's going to saute until it's translucent. And then I'm going to add flour, pepper, uh, dry mustard, paprika, a little bit of salt and some lemon juice. But while we're waiting for that, mm -hmm. let's talk about the history <laughs> of that. Sure. What, what would you say is the most surprising? Well, first of all, how far back do you go with history? Well, I say the tour covers 400 plus years. Uh, we start on the waterfront on the Kennebec River 
and talk about the people who were here before the European colonizers came, the Wabanaki people who had lived here for thousands of years and used the river as places to go to and from, friends and family, seasonal camps. And we cover 200 more years of history right in Waterfront Park from about, 18, from about 1600 to 1800. Um, covering the early coloni colonization period, um, the growth of Georgetown and uh, this area, which was called Long Reach, actually, um, all the way up to the Revolutionary War. We all know how that turned out. And it was before that was even over that that's when Bath got its name, uh, when we became the first town chartered under the Constitution of the state of Massachusetts. Remember, we were part of Massachusetts at this time. I just had a little jolt when you said Massachusetts and not Maine. <laughs> I know. Well, there's a little tension still. Well, uh, but don't worry, we took care of that in 1820. Uh, and that's when we changed our name from Longreach to Bath. And so that kind of covers those 200 years I cover in Waterfront Park. And really the bulk of the tour is the next 200 years and takes us through the heyday of Bath, uh, the 1830s, 40s and 50s to today. Cool. Now, you said the Wabanaki had um, summer camps here. Now, you're not talking cottages and they'd come down with their family and have lobster bakes. No. You mean <laughs> fishing camps yes, and clamming, shellfish. I just wanted to clarify yes. that yeah. for anybody. Of course, the way that uh, the Native peoples and the Europeans used the land was quite different. So, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, Meg. Um, so what would you say, like, have you found some surprising things that you were not expecting? Well, I think everybody knows that Bath is a vibrant uh, town today. Small town, we would say. Um, some people would say one of America's best small towns. Um, a lot of people but, would say that. <laughs> but back in the 1840s and 50s, Bath was one of the largest seaports in the United States. That's amazing. Only behind the likes of New York, Philadelphia, Boston, and this all had to do with the shipbuilding taking place here as well as commerce, the shipping industry. We have a custom house right next door, um, built in the 1850s in this heyday, um, that kind of uh, epitomizes the wealth that was here in Bath and that was really driven by those two industries. So I just, um, sorry Meg, sure. I just added the flour to the melted butter and onions and then the spices. And I'm making a roux, which is fat and flour. And this is what's going to thicken our half and half, taking it easy on our arteries with the half and half instead of the heavy cream. <laughs> All right. Um, so what else, like, what else do you cover? Like, you cover... The, in this century mm -hmm. as well? Yes, yes, all the way through really today. Um, but what's nice for me is to have people look around downtown, look at the buildings, for example, the building that we're in, um, or the shipyard, BIW, which is still building Navy destroyers today, the shipyard here in Bath, and have people look and learn by what they're looking at. So, for example, downtown, just a couple blocks from here, I have people look up and down the block and see if they can tell, for example, what's the oldest building on the block. Bath, like many towns, um, had a couple of devastating fires, um, which they had to rebuild after. And um, many of our buildings were established that are here today in the late 19th century. And that's what's so special about Bath is we have an intact 19th century downtown. Lots to look at and lots to uncover if you look closely. Mm -hmm. So uh, one question that we get asked a lot by people that are new to Bath is mm -hmm. why is Bath a city and Brunswick, which is like three times bigger, why is that a town? Yeah, that's a great question. I would wanna do some more research, but my instinct is part of it does have to do with Bath's prominence in this era. Bath became a city before the Civil War um, in the 1840s, I believe, and then our county separated from a larger county, Lincoln County, next door, and became our own county, Sagadahawk. If you look on the map, it's one of the smallest counties. I think it's the smallest county in Maine. But if you think about it, with all the shipbuilding going on here, all of the wealth, when one of those ships went down and the insurance was only going to pay so much, there was a lot of lawyers looking to get involved in, in those yeah. battles. We needed our own courthouse to take care of that. So uh, the, at the end of the street here is our county courthouse from uh, 1860s, beautiful Italianate building. And I think that's probably part of the story is just, it, it's history. Yeah, that's interesting. I've never thought about that. But I would want to the do more lawyer, research. The <laughs> lawyer side. Yeah. Well, my understanding is, is it's how it was incorporated when it was first incorporated. And like you mm -hmm. said, it was the biggest city. It was the third city in Maine after Portland and Bangor. It right. was the third incorporated city. We'd been a town up until that time. Brunswick, wonderful place to visit, 
never made that status. Right. Perhaps, but again, but I would do more research. But because I think because of how it was established, so it's yep. just historical. Yeah. Um, so you can see my sauce here is thickening really beautifully. And just almost ready. Um, so what what other tours do you do one tour you do separate yeah, right now ones. i'm just doing the tour downtown uh, because for me i think it's really important to establish that baseline that sort of uh even going back half a billion years to the geological forces that established our incredible uh, landscape here in, in maine we think of the uh, kennebec river running north south all the other peninsulas the prominence of our granite ledges and to begin the story there, and to, you can really see that topography reflected in Bath itself. Our town is a series of hills and valleys, and our main streets, High Street, Middle Street, Washington, run parallel to the river on ridges. Um, so to establish that story, I would recommend anybody coming to take that tour, the history of Bath as seen through the downtown area. But I am adding the historic home tour uh, next month mm -hmm. and uh, it's been wonderful to do the research for that and I really have to thank all the folks who have made records available and accessible to people like me so that we can dig into these stories and tell them to others and help to get others invested and interested in our town as well, our city. Uh, so for example, most of my research is done at the Patent Free Library in their history and genealogy room and the folks from the Bath Historical Society helped to uh, collect, organize, and make accessible mostly paper documents like postcards, photographs, letters, and then of course um, our very own Sagadahawk Preservation, our organization that's celebrating their 50th year this year. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. And they are responsible for our two historic districts and uh, a sort of an inventory of all the historic buildings in town. And this is not just for people, and a lot of people do this, they research the history of their own house, and we have a lot of great plaques around town that tell you who lived there. If you had a sea captain who lived there, you'd be sure to want to put that on your plaque. And yes, Louisa, we do have a sea captain who lived in our house. How about you? No, okay. but mine is a historical home. Yes, well, there are other important people too, and that's of course. part of the story that I will try to tell in the historic home tour, is it's wonderful to look at beautiful houses and hear about prominent people, but I like hearing about the ordinary everyday people too, don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. The, like the guy that built my, my house is called the Gapton Smith home. Okay. The Smiths owned the house or owned the property where the house was built. Um, and Gatcombe was a builder, and he built quite a few houses in downtown Bath. So a builder built your house. A builder lived built in my it. house. Yes. No, he didn't live in it. Okay. He built it for oh, the Smith family. Oh, I see. I yeah. gotcha. So both of those names are on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. So it'll it'll be um, that we'll add that to the uh, the schedule in August. So whatever nice. works for you. And I think another thing that I'm finding is a lot of folks who come to town, they'll call me and say, "Oh, we're only here for a couple of days," or it's going to be raining on your scheduled day. Could we do it the next day instead? So I really emphasize that if the schedule, if there's something that doesn't work for you, just shoot me a text or an email and we can make and something work. Set something up. That's yep. awesome. That's yep. really great. Um, so back to the Thermidor briefly. Um, so I said five and a half to six cups of lobster, and this is not five and a half to six cups. So I'm not going to use all of the sauce on here. Um, this was four pound to pound and a half lobsters. Um, because I mostly wanted chunk meat, I did buy one one claw lobster, which is a much less expensive mm. per pound. Um, it was $6.99 a pound. Um, so today is July 22nd, um, 2021, in case you're watching this later. Um, <laughs> Lobster meat is very expensive right now. There's been a lot of um, trading with other countries that has not happened or exporting to other countries that has not been happening. So um, lobster is very expensive, but if you can get out there and buy some, it really helps our local fisheries um, to do that. Um, so I'm going to... Someone asked, um, do you ask for a hard shell when you... You can. I got soft gel um, just because I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. Um, if I had Meg and her husband for dinner, I would have had only the best. <laughs> but um, no, it's the same. It tastes the same. It's just less meat per um, shell. But you can ask for hard shells. Sometime parts of the summer, you can't get them. 
um, or it's very hard to find them. They're just soft shell. Um, and really the big difference is, um, like I said, it's just, um, there's more water, so you're getting less meat per pound, but the price is less. So, um, so here we go with our two sticks of butter. Um, which has caused some controversy. It sounded like a lot of butter to me, so I had Heather call her mother and her grandmother. Nana Martha sadly has passed, but um, nobody could really remember. There are two different versions. <laughs> there are several, several different versions. So this is a very buttery crust. And if that's too much butter, cut back on it or add more crackers or whatever you want to do. It, it is a lot of butter in there. But this is going to get drizzled on top, and then it's going to go into a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes. You can also broil it um, if it's not turning brown because you have way too much butter in your crackers. Um, but my God, doesn't that look delicious? It looks amazing. Um, I don't think I could eat again for like a week <laughs> after this, but or only vegetables. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say that's too much better. I'm going to say it's too much better. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of swimming. We'll, up we'll update. Exactly, Heather. Sometimes, thank you. We'll update the right. recipe. Sometimes history and like what worked back in the day doesn't Just work today. Work now. Right. It's all because Ritz crackers aren't nearly as absorbent <laughs> oh, as they used to be. That I'm could be. Sure, they changed the recipe. I'm sure that's That's a it. great point. Um, did people here in Bath eat a lot of lobster? Yeah, I mean, from the research, the little research that I've done, what I found more common was things like oyster stew, or oyster, lobster stew and lobster salad was on the menu. <coughs> to kind of picture um, the types of occasions where lobster was on the menu, it would be, you know, kind of high society, some of those uh, well-heeled residents of Bath who maybe didn't want to get their hands messy with the, <laughs> with the lobster shells. Again, probably much more to that story, but from the research that I've been able to do, that's what I've seen most often. Mm -hmm. And then also at one point it was so common that people just didn't, Yeah, like, I'm sure probably the hoity-toity people didn't even eat lobster. Right. I'm sure that, yeah, folks watching, if you know one thing about the history of lobster, it's that it was so common, um, it was seen as something that you would only serve to prisoners, for example, and even the prisoners had rights and were able to protest and say, <laughs> too much too lobster. Much lobster. <laughs> I don't ever have that problem. <laughs> no, it doesn't no, for happen sure, to for me. sure. <laughs> um, cool, well, thank you for joining me. Um, what's your website? So my website is EmbarkMainTours.com and I, I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and kind of try to post regularly just fun facts about Bath and give you a sense of what you'll be seeing and doing on the tour with little peaks as to what my participants are asking and um, always something new to see here downtown. There's nev never a dull moment. <laughs> can people send you questions on Facebook or Instagram? Yeah, and sure, absolutely, yeah. And I mean, again, my contact information is on the website as well. So whether it be through social media, um, I'm a teacher, I'm an elementary school librarian here in town. So this is kind of my ideal summer job that I've created for myself nice. and I am ready to uh, respond to you and set up a custom tour or make sure that if you bring your family that everyone there's something in it for everybody that's awesome how long have you been living here I've been here for four years uh, my husband and I moved here from Washington DC I worked previously at the Library of Congress C-SPAN and I even had a stint as a National Park Ranger in Vermont cool. so I'm bringing kind of all of that experience to bear um, here in Bath and our wonderful downtown and again thanks to all the people who've done the hard work and do the hard work every day, all the local businesses, like now you're cooking to make our downtown such an amazing place. And the oh, folks who work in the archives and the historians and the librarians who make sure that we have the information, the historical yeah. information to make it come to life today and make it more meaningful. Yeah. And all the property, the downtown property owners that have done such a great job at keeping the authenticity of our buildings. And if you've never been to Bath, if you're watching this and you've never been, you gotta come. It's just really a great little city. In fact, it's Maine's cool little city. We're not using that slogan anymore. Oh, we're, not, it's, <laughs> we're not Maine's cool little city. But here's this, I have, well, we are. We just I have a slogan that slogan. I use on my website that I kind of like. Should I, can I, can I try it out? Please. Okay. Um, a small Maine town with a big American story. Whoa. I liked it. <laughs> I think that's really great. Um, well, <clears throat> 
cooling butter aside, <laughs> this is lobster thermidor, and um, we're going to cook this off tomorrow and feed it to the staff who are going to be really happy, I hope. Um, next week, we're doing a summer fruit trifle. Mm -hmm. It's going to be kind of a longer demo because we've got to make a cake, we've got to make pudding, we've got to make whipped cream and put it all together. Um, some of that stuff I'll have all ready, so we're not going to wait for it all to cook, but um, I'll go through the steps on that. And then the week after that, we have Jen Lagnini from Turtle Rock Farm, and she's going to be making pickles. Awesome. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it'll be a nice counterpoint to the... It, yes, <laughs> it will be a little healthier. Um, so that's all from us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Meg. It was Thank great you. talking to you and great. learning a little bath history. Thank you. Can't wait to go on a tour. I know, me too. Right, thanks, everyone. <laughs>